Hello, I'm Ronnie Moses of Design Pattern Sew, and welcome to this bite-sized class where we'll be talking about drafting the cowl neckline. What we're going to discuss today is how to draft a cowl neckline, how to calculate exactly how deep the cowl neckline will fall before we sew it up, where we want to add pleats, fullness, or additional fabric, and sewing the cowl top neckline. So, when we design our pattern, we're going to start with a well-fitting sloper. We'll determine how wide the cowl neckline should be by measuring the length of the shoulder seam from the outer edge of the shoulder inwards. Then, once we've determined where the inside points are, we're going to take a tape measure and drape it so that we could measure the length of the neckline. We'll be measuring this from the inner edges of the desired shoulder seam. There are many different cowl necklines, and the difference is where we add fullness and where we add pleats, where we let their additional fabric be. We're going to discuss several variations today. So, here, is a very simple cowl neckline. It's done by doing slash and spread. We're going to start at the shoulders and additional fabric will be added around the neckline. The depth of the added value volume is around the bust height and we don't have additional pleats or volume beneath the bust height. So on our sloper, we're going to mark the desired shoulder length. From here, we'll draw a straight line out to the center neckline, and we're going to cut this piece off. Later, we'll be removing more, but this is a great start. Now, for slash and spread, we're going to draw several horizontal lines from the shoulder seam down to the center front fold. Since the volume is added only up to the bust, we're going to be drawing our lines down towards the bust and not further down. If we wanted our cowl neckline to have additional fabric below the bust line, we draw our lines deeper. We'll cut along these lines, leaving a teeny tiny bit of paper at the top edge so that we could pivot these strips. On a new sheet of paper, we're going to draw our center fold line and perpendicular from that out at a 90 degree angle, we're going to draw a line half of the length of our neckline, the desired neckline of the cowl, what we measured. Then we're going to put the inside corner of our shoulder seam at the edge of our new neckline. From there, we're going to spread the slices that we've cut. We're going to spread them rather evenly so that our center fold of the pattern sits on the center fold line. We're going to trace this out. And then we have our new pattern. This does not have a lining yet. What we're going to do is add a lining by folding the top of the pattern down two inches or five centimeters. This could be done in a straight line or in a curve. Here I've done it in a straight line and we're going to cut out the pattern and our lining will be cut out mirroring the pattern. And this is our basic cowl. In this variation of our cowl, we see that we have added volume around the bust height, pulling the cowl away from the neck and away from the body. Extra fullness is added only to this area. We'll take our cowl pattern and define how deep to add the additional fullness. Here we saw it was around bust height, so 
slightly below our armpit, we'll draw a line. We're going to cut at this line and we're going to leave a millimeter at our center fold so that we could pivot this without the pieces coming apart. We're going to pivot the paper pattern, the top pattern piece outwards. We could widen this anywhere between three to 10 inches or seven to 25 centimeters, depending on how much additional fullness we want. Take note that at our side seam, we're actually overlapping pieces of paper and we're going to have to add this additional length to the bottom of our outside seam. Then we'll trace around our new pieces. And this is our cowl neckline with added center fullness. In this design, they've added pleats to the shoulder seams. What we'll do is we'll cut a horizontal line at our shoulder seam for each desired pleat. Here, I've added one pleat, but you could add as many as you want. We'll tape a piece of paper with the width of the pleat in that cut area. And then we're going to fold the paper to conceal the pleat. We'll cut our pattern, and this will give us the shape of the pleat within the pattern. Once we're ready to sew it all together, we'll start with our back pattern piece. We're going to finish the back neckline as desired. Then we'll fold our lining around the back neckline, around the shoulder seams, so that we sandwich the back shoulder seams between the front and lining piece. We'll sew our shoulder seams with a piece of clear elastic or bias fabric, bias cut fabric, in order to give them stability over time. Once our shoulder seams are sewn together, we'll insert the sleeves using the flat insertion method. Then we'll sew down the sides of sleeves and bodice. With that, we could hem our shirt and sleeves as we normally would. Want to learn more? This was just a tiny taste, but I've got a six week hands-on transformational course that empowers home sewists to draft and create patterns without purchasing or mod modifying patterns for every sewing project. We'll master the art of measuring and drafting patterns for yourself and others, creating a range of knit shirt designs. Throughout the course, I'll be talking about how different modifications affect different patterns, creating different results, whether we add fullness in place A or place B. I'd love to have you join me in my course, Fashion Freedom Formula Knit Shirt Edition. We start soon.